Hello, it is I, once again, the Bruce Wayne of Azure Lane, back at it again for another Azure Lane video, and I thought I would just give a quick ship review of the Frostfall event, and um, I gotta say these ships are interesting, but um, only one of them really shines, but I'll just show, I'll just get right into it. Okay, so at first we have Kursk. Now, um, Kursk is a heavy cruiser, and she's unique because she has light armor. Um, unfortunately, she does not have either the speed nor the evasion, nor the health, really, to serve as a good tank. And she's kind of squishy. So um, I would not say this is a this is a solid heavy cruiser. But um, one thing she does have that's kind of unique is she actually launches seaplanes and both of those seaplanes can debuff the enemy um the problem is so they debuff the enemy to kursk's damage and um if both planes hit the same target it would actually debuff curse or debuff the enemy by uh 20 to kursk damage now um that would be amazing if kursk actually did top tier heavy cruiser damage but she doesn't, not really. I mean, she only she does have main gun mount plus one, but she doesn't have you know preloaded torpedoes, um, and her efficiencies on her guns and torpedoes are just okay. They're not astounding. So, um, and her torpedo stat and firepower stat are okay, but not really that good. So, and she has incredibly low luck. So, um, I would say this. This is a um, this is a mediocre to poor heavy cruiser. Um, probably, wait, hold on a second. Um, it does have like, I guess you could say, nah, not really. Okay, it's a poor, it really is kind of a poor heavy cruiser. Um, it, it has like some okay buffs. It's just, you need something good to buff for the buff to be worth it. You know what I mean? Dang. Anyway, uh, I shall move on from Kursk because I mean she has a very cool art design. So I was like, ah, I was hoping the ship would be amazing, but I guess not. Anyway, moving on to uh, the real shining crown jewel of this event, and that is uh, Vorishalov. And um, like I have said before. For some reason, when Northern Parliament introduces a new light cruiser, that light cruiser is usually top-notch, and Vorishalov is no exception. So, um, she has a very good uh, main gun efficiency, and she has excellent torpedoes that are actually preloaded. Um, but the main thing about her is she gets a special ghost secondary gun. And um, the secondary guns... Uh, armor modifiers are 100 for all armor types so um, it's a destroyer gun and that gun actually since it's 100 for heavy armor it could actually do some very real damage on heavy armor but um, I've been leveling up Varishalov since I got her and I maxed out uh, Varishalov's uh, Vor like the Varishalov's ice bind skill and you can feel the gun like it's that effective her secondary gun is a it's a damn good secondary gun. So um, she has good main gun um, efficiency and a good main guns, a awesome secondary gun and torpedoes. So she's pretty much just like spewing munitions across the field at the enemy the entire time you're using her. So, um, and on top of that, um, her second skill gives her a very good evasion boost um even though it decreases her speed by three but um yeah she has she is a solid tank on top of this and it decreases her resistance to um or it decreases her aircraft damage taken by a lot as well so she is a highly tanky high damage dealing light cruiser and on top of that um, this is the thing that is just just a cherry on top of the cake is if you get her to level 120 
She gives all your light cruisers a plus one EVA boost. We haven't had a single light cruiser deliver that since since Emil Burton, and I think she's the only one. So um, I am immediately leveling Barisha Love to level 120. She is the top priority for me to level up right now, specifically for that EVA boost point, because I use light cruisers heavily, and um, the number one thing they benefit from when it comes to fleet tech is EVA. So... This is this little one EVA point. This is, you know, a hidden gem among what is already the shining jewel of this event. So I would highly, highly recommend getting Varishalov if you can. If you can spare the gems, I would I would recommend getting Varishalov and leveling her to 120. Uh having said that, moving on to the next uh ship from this event uh Sevastopol which I'm just going to save you the trouble and let you know that this is a useless battleship in 99% of circumstances however um one benefit she does have is um so since she does deliver a heal if you are running say a full northern parliament faction fleet uh you could team her up with Volga and uh, she would keep she her and Volga would probably keep your vanguard alive through some pretty terrible stuff. But uh, the problem is, Sevastopol's damage herself is woefully unimpressive. I'm not sure using her as a heal is even worth the um, loss in damage that you would get from you know the benefits you could use of using a better damage dealing ship in her spot so i would say sevastopol is mostly useless uh, uh yeah terrible right all right and now on to the gear review of this event so uh i was right we got another action report uh or it's they, it's called an action report sometimes they're called intel reports or action reports but it is one of these file folder uh gear pieces and if you maxed it out, which I think I will, um, it will give you 16 firepower and 11 accuracy. Now, um, mostly for the firepower stat, this is actually very good to add to uh, destroyers or light cruisers. I would say mostly destroyers that are gun focused. This is a very good thing to add to a gun focused destroyer. High priority, but um, on top of that, it also increases a Northern Parliament ship's luck by three. So um, I would say I'm definitely going to up this to uh, plus 11. And I will test this on destroyers and let you know the results when I see them. But so far, I like this one. Um, I kind of think that the other intel reports the um because they lower your uh ship's damage to sirens by six percent are much better for operation siren but for all other types of uh combat in the game i think this one might be better in any case moving on to the main uh heavy cruiser gun the prototype triple 240 millimeter is actually very good on heavy armor so uh i'll just sh actually i'll just show you the comparison right here uh to the other guns so if you see i have the wiki set to heavy armor now it does fall behind the rainbow gun in all areas on um however though uh if you do not have the rainbow gun or say you don't want to you know you want a good heavy cruiser gun but you don't want to uh use all the gold parts gold gun parts to up the rainbow gun to plus 13. this gun is actually still very good it's a total improvement over the american heavy cruiser gun and um except against light armor but I, you know you're not really aiming to use this thing on light armor anyway so i think the russian heavy cruiser gun is a good gun to get and it is worth using if you don't already have a rainbow heavy cruiser gun. Uh, now on to the last piece of gear, 
which is the triple 180 millimeter light cruiser gun. This thing is totally useless. I'll just save you trouble. Totally useless piece of gear. I would not even bother with this. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's all I got for you today. So, um, yeah, so basically get this gun. Totally worth using. Uh, action report Frostfall. Uh, it looks like it may have some use. Totally worth using, especially on gun-focused Northern Parliament destroyers. And uh, if you could only get one ship from this event, I would go for Varishalov. She is clearly the crown jewel. So that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, take it easy. And uh, farewell and following seas, my fellow Shikikons. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Take care, take care guys.